chapter number 20. And we'll be in verse number 14 this evening. And we'll look in verse 14 down through verse number 18, which will complete this chapter. Genesis chapter number 20. And when you found your place in Genesis chapter 20, verse number 14, let's stand together. All who can, all who will this evening will be in Genesis chapter number 20, verse number 14. The Bible says, And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and <coughs> gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. You can be seated this evening here in chapter number 20. We've been looking for some time now at the strained relationship that we find between Abraham and Abimelech. We started looking at this uh, throughout chapter 20. And this relationship was strained only because of one reason. It was because of Abraham and Sarah's lie. That's what caused the strained relationship here. His deceitfulness in, in his conversation. Understand this evening that what we say, what we do, and how we live our life will hin can hinder someone from walking with the Lord. We can hinder somebody else's walk by what we say, what we do. So what I'm saying here is, is that what I say and what I do and how I live can also hinder someone to, from coming to Christ. Understand that? Not only with walking, it can hinder their walk with Christ, if you're talking about a brother. But how I live, Brother Reggie, what I say and what I do, the things that they see in my life can hinder someone who's lost from ever wanting anything to do with God. Has anybody here ever heard the old phrase, I'll never go to church because of all the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people are in hell today who have made that statement. Mm -hmm. You know the problem, Brother Tom, with that statement? It's not valid that they stay out of church because of it, but they are right. There are tons of hypocrites in the church. There are. But you know what? So, Tom, there's tons of Hypocrites at Walmart, too. Mm -hmm. There are tons of hypocrites at work, Brother Matt, I'm sure. There's tons of them. Miss Robin used to work in the public for many years. Did you ever see any hypocrites come in there? Never. Didn't think so. Never, 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 never. I'm sure it was on a daily basis, if not hourly. <clears throat> we have to be careful in how we live now. You'll notice this evening with Abimelech, we've talked about Abimelech, how Abimelech listened when God dealt with him in a dream, and Abimelech handled it, right? Abimelech was more spiritual and didn't even know God than Abraham, who was God's servant. Amen. You know, that's sadly becoming more... It is. What is said and done, how I live, can hinder somebody from coming to Christ. I never want it to be said, Brother Mike Brown, that I didn't go to that church because Pastor Bo was a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want anybody to say, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with that church because it's full of hypocrites and they be right. Mm -hmm. People are going to say, I'm not going over there because it's full of hypocrites. <clears throat> that's, just, that, that's just the go-to. But I don't want it to ever be said with validity about Hope Bible Baptist Church. I don't want it to be said because I want my life and my actions to point people to Christ, not away. This evening we'll be getting into these verses, and I want you to look at them this evening as we talk about 
the reconciliation from rebuking. The reconciliation from rebuking. These men may have never got this set. Abimelech may have never been the man that he was had, had not, and may not have been sensitive to that dream had he not been sensitive to that dream, rather. He would have never gone to Abraham and said, you did me wrong. You hurt my family. You hurt this, that. Had he not had enough fortitude about him to do it. Amen. So let's look at it this evening. And I want to look at the reconciliation from rebuking. Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us, Lord? Lord and Father, we just uh, once again, Lord, say thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for tonight. And Father, we just pray that as the pastor brings forth this word, Lord, that you plant it upon his heart, Lord, that you would just give him wisdom and, and clarity of speech and boldness, Lord, in the things he's got to share. And Lord, we want to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The message this evening, <clears throat> we will be focused around these two men uh, for the majority of the this, well, actually, for the entirety of this, I'm trying to get my, my cross in here so that I got my, my spot saved there, Zeb. That one right there. I'm trying to get my cross in there, save the spot. <laughs> oh, the wind's going to blow it over. But <clears throat> these two men, their relationship with one another, their knowledge of one another began pretty much on a, a, a bit of a rocky uh, start, if you will. But thank God for the reconciliation that was able to happen. Okay, think, I want you to think about the reconciliation that occurs when, when people have enough guts to speak up to one another. Oh, yeah. When people have enough guts to say, well, you know, I don't, da 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 da. Or the Bible says, da 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 da. The problem today, why we don't see that a lot, Brother Swope, why this stuff doesn't happen, is because of the same reason that happened with Abraham. <laughs> Well, what happened when Abimelech come over and said, hey, you done, here, I'm going to give you your wife back. Because you, he said, well, it's this and that and the other thing. Start making excuses. So, well, no, but I, I know it's this. And, no, 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 look, if you're being rebuked from the word of God, just take it. Right? right? Just take it. it, it it's it, not, well, I'll just look like less of a Christian. We all are. Amen. We all are. If the Word of God catches you, instead of making excuses for it, if the Word of God hits you right between the eyes, Miss Linda, instead of saying, oh, well, you know, but everybody else does this. No, 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 no. It ain't about everybody else. What did God hit you between the eyes with? Right. And that's where we have to learn to get right. How many times you heard, whether it's amen or whether it's all me, right? If God starts dealing with me something, even if I've looked at the Scriptures and I feel like I'm right, uh-oh. Then God shows me I'm wrong. Yep. <coughs> well, that's just not what that means. No, that's exactly what that means. Right. And that's where it's time to grow up yep. and learn from the scriptures, right? We all, we all have been guilty of it. Sure. When, when those things happen where you, you can't, you know, get corrected and things. It, it proves a bit of a character flaw, if you will. And it happens to all of us. Someone, when someone corrects us, we're not willing to speak to them. Anybody ever been corrected and then shun that person for a little while until you realize they were right? And then, okay, well, I'll talk to them again. Can I get a witness right? We've all got that way. Amen. If you're married, you've done that. Amen. All right, now we're talking. <laughs> you might, no, in my week, you know that. <laughs> but that's character flaw. Brother Matt, you know why? As a Christian, they ought to be able to be rebuked. The Bible says that two-thirds of preaching, Brother Reggie, is negative. Reproof, rebuke. Then it sort of, with all long suffering about the fault of death. Right? He said, preach the word, be as the end now see it. Right? So if the Bible is telling us to reprove, rebuke, and exhort one another, then when that happens, Brother Swope, why do we lock down? Yeah. I'm mad at you. Right. It's not me. It's not me. Brother Matt, if I did something unbiblical, 
and we're friends. And you come up and told me, said, hey, Pastor, I noticed that you were living your life like this. And the Bible clearly says, da, 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 da. And I said, why don't you mind your own business? Am I loving my brother right there? I'll, I'll look at him and say, you know what, Brother Matt? I've not thought about that. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Truth be known, that'd be a lie probably because the Holy Ghost has done told us the same thing Brother Matt did, but that's okay. we got to be, gotta be conscious of it. It shows that we have a higher opinion of ourselves than we should. A bit, to be honest with you, that's the wrong mentality to have. You know what it also shows? Brother Matt, if we can't be corrected in our life. Nobody like, can I, let's just go ahead and say it. Nobody wants to be corrected. All right, everybody wants to be right all the time. Everybody wants everybody to agree with them all the time. Brother Caller, am I right right there? We all want to be it. Everybody, I want you to listen to me and I want you to agree with me all the time. That's just the way, that's just the way we're built. That's the way we're made up. That's not life though, right? Why? Because we're all individuals. But when I got scripture, I got scripture. Amen. But, understand this evening, whenever we can't take rebuke from a friend, what in the world makes you think you'd accept rebuke from God? Amen. Do I live right all the time? No. Does the Bible rebuke me? Pretty regularly. Are there some things that I thought, Brother Tom, I had nailed down in the Bible that more study, more prayer? Miss Jessica God said, nope. You ain't got that quite where it needs to be, big boy. Yeah, there is. You know what I do? I'd like to say, I said, yes, sir, I'll get it straight now. But a lot of times I say, but God, I've lived like this for 10 years. But God, I've done this. I've heard people preach about this and this and this. Yeah, he says, yeah, but they were wrong. Right? Got to be real careful, guys, is what we allow our own minds to tell us. Abraham really tried his best to push it off and say, oh, no, it's something else, something else. <clears throat> Abimelech, the lost man, does right in this. In our text, we find that Abimelech initiated this reconciliation, which is a light on Abraham, by the way. And he did it in a few different ways. Let's look at how he did it. I've got three or four different ways that, that he did it. Look at verse number 14. I want you to first see the, the, the presentation that was made. The presentation. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them to Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. Now look down at verse number 16. <coughs> And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Look at what all was presented to Abraham and Sarah. Look at these gifts. These gifts were not something to turn your nose up at. These gifts were something of a high dollar value. These gifts were something of great importance. Think about what this shows for a moment. Here's Abimelech. What did Abimelech do wrong to Abraham? Knowingly, now he did wrong by taking his wife, but he didn't know that. But knowingly, Brother Matt, he did nothing wrong. But yet, he's saying, here, take all this money. Take all these, all this livestock. Take all this stuff. Here, I've got land. And he wasn't even the one that had done wrong. Here is a man and wife that caused destruction to come and potential obliteration of his family. Brother Swamp, if this hadn't gotten right, Abimelech's family would have stopped right there. Because he walked up, God locked up the whole house. Well, nobody having babies. And yet he provides gifts to them. This is going to be a little convicting tonight. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead and set the tone for you now. You go ahead and get it out of the way. All right? It's going to be a touch convicting tonight all the way around on both ends of this thing. But what principle does this bring to mind tonight? What do you think about that for a moment? A Bill Knight giving all these goods, loving on this man who has done him wrong. Proverbs 25. 
tells an account. You don't have to go over there. We're not going to read it. But you want to write that down so you go back and look at it. We find there's an enemy of a man. And Solomon writes, if he's hungry, to feed. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And in doing so, Brother Matt, what does Solomon say that does? He said it heaps coals yeah, of fire over his head. Yeah, yeah. He said he's done you wrong. But you can show him <coughs> that you don't hold a grudge. Mm. It ain't time to pray yet. We can all look back up here. I know. I know. I told you it's going to be convicted. It's going to hurt. But instead of saying no, say, okay, God, fix me. Right? Yes. He's keep heaping coals of fire on the head of Abraham and Sarah. Here's the bad part. Miss Susan, it should have been Abraham and Sarah giving him stuff. They were wealthy. They had it all, right? They, they had the livestock. They, I mean, my goodness, that's the reason he and Lot's relationship broke up like it did, because he had too much. He had plenty. He should be like, no, wait a minute, Abimelech. Let me do this for you. I've done you wrong. But that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. Abimelech had to be the one to come. Abimelech had to be the bigger man. The principle here for us is stop ignoring the people you don't agree with. Stop ignoring the people who you feel like have done you wrong. Stop. Stop being a baby. Can I just be honest? You got the real talk? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Let's grow up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's pull the big boy pants on. Right. Mm -hmm. And get out the sandbox. These people are dying and going to hell out here, y'all. Right. And we're too worried about whether I agree with this person 100% on this. You don't. So quit worrying about it. Right. Mm -hmm. We got people dying and going to hell, Brother Mike and Fail, and we're just concerned about what this one's doing and what that one's doing. Who cares what they're doing? Let's go out and get people that we can win to Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey, Abimelech, I've not got there yet, and I want to get there so fast, but I'm going to calm down. <laughs> but Abimelech here, he offered him land, right, Brother Swope? And what it says, so I got land right here, choose where you want to live. He wanted the man of God around. He wanted people of of God around. Mm. And we're feuding inside of our churches mm -hmm. over opinion mm -hmm. and preference. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. If I don't agree with you, Brother Matt, it's not because I don't love you. It's not because I don't like you. I just don't agree with you. Let's go. Let's go. It doesn't matter. Right. It does not matter. Right? Right. There's another principle here in Matthew 5 44. The Bible tells us, he says, Jesus says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Who's signing up for that? <laughs> you did when you got saved. Yeah. You might not know it at the time, but that's just an extra perk you get <laughs> to love them that hate you, right? Pray for them that despitefully use you. Amen. You know, I pray for people that absolutely hate my guts. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said people? No, people actually hate you back now. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because it's not me. It's this Bible they don't like. Because yeah. you know? outside this Bible, I'm a pretty likable guy. Yeah. I like to think I am anyway. Probably not. But I like to think I am. Used to be. But he says to love your enemies. I pray for people on a daily basis, Brother Matt, that have me for dinner. But I'll never get an invitation, but they have me for dinner every night. 
Amen. You say, well, you don't know that. I do. It shows. It shows. It comes out in the face. It comes out in the conversation. Just to let you know, God don't God don't leave don't leave his servants dumb and blind with things. Amen. But understand this this evening. I'm gonna love you anyway. I'm gonna pray for you anyway. If you're hungry, I'm gonna feed you. <clears throat> if you're thirsty, I'm gonna give you something to drink. And I pray for you whether you despitefully use me or persecute me or what. Because you know at the end of the day I don't do this for you. Right. Brother Danny, what I do up here is not for you. What I do is for the Lord, and what I do for Him is for you. Yes. Amen. But ultimately, whether you were here or whether you weren't here, I would stand here and preach tonight if it was just my family. Yes. I'd preach the same message. You know how I know? Because God gave it to me. Yes. Amen. In my study, in my prayer time, these are the burdens that God has had on my heart for some time. And I'll be honest with you, Brother Mike. I didn't even know it was coming up in a series. Mm -hmm. yep. I had no idea. And here we are. Those that vex your spirit, stop letting them have control over you. Mm -hmm. That right there, that's a quote for you. Mm -hmm. Stop letting them have control over you. It's a real shame that Abraham had to be the recipient and not the giver in this situation. You know what you do when you allow those people that vex your spirit in such a way, Brother Tom? No, oh, just they, they just tear my. They're sleeping like a baby. Yeah. yeah. You're the one that's nerves are shot. You're the one crying into your pillow. Amen. You say, I'm just so burdened for them. Yeah, I get it. Pray for them. Love them. <coughs> but do not let it dictate who you are or what you do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Abimelech, Abimelech kept being the man that he was. He was willing to give what he had. <coughs> he was going to listen to what God had to say. Abimelech gave these gifts an acknowledgement of his wrongdoing. He did wrong by taking another man's wife. Though it was not intentional in his heart, though the action was not his intent was to take another man's wife, it still did not change the fact he knew in his heart that he had done wrong. God had shown him in that dream that he had done wrong. Brother Mike, do we think that Abraham wasn't shown of his wrong? Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, Brother Mike. <clears throat> Doesn't say. Maybe he was, and he wouldn't, <clears throat> or maybe he wasn't. Brother Tom, you ready? Because he couldn't take correction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I ain't saying either way. I don't know. Bible doesn't say. Bible style, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you some things to ponder, if you will. Listen, when a Christian, as Christians, we are disobedient to God, it's a shame on us. It's an absolute shame. Especially, folks, well, don't get don't be fooled by thinking this world don't know nothing about the Bible. We fool by it now. Because every <laughs> every religious person online is going to post a little, well, look how good God's been. This is this, and Christians ought to live like this. And you know that gets in the hands of everybody who's a little churchy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they know that whenever there's something going on over here, whenever something's going on over there, this person's acting like this. Oh, that's not very Christ-like. See, that's why I'm going to church. That's why I don't like organized religion. I just like to They don't like organized religion because a pastor hurt them. I said, I ain't him. I said, I ain't him. Come on. Well, but there's Christians that they ain't them. And if they are there, don't worry about it. You ain't supposed to be here for them anyway. Amen. 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 But 
drives me insane, the excuses. But you know what drives me even more insane than that, Brother Mike Brown? It's not only their excuses, but a lot of their excuses have validity to them, and we've allowed it to happen. I mean, we as the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How many have we hindered? Serious question I want you to really think about. How many have we hindered from the voice of God because of our personal hypocrisy? It's a shame that this world that we live in, that many professing, professing Christians have difficulty looking better than the world in which they live. You look at a lot of churches now. And you can't tell the difference between a church and a nightclub. You can't tell the difference between church folk and party folk. You just can't. Not in your music, not in your attitude, not in your walk, not in your speech. My goodness, I never thought that it would come to the point that there was so-called preachers saying that it's okay for two boys to kiss. No, sir. You ain't read your Bible. So-called preachers saying that it's okay to live how you want to live, all ungodly ways, Brother Matt, just make sure you're here on Sunday morning so I can get you a nickel. That's really all they're saying, Brother Mike. No, I believe God called us to be separated. Yes. I believe God called us out from the world. Right. Right. Amen. He tells us to live in the world, right. and yet we're doing that, those things. What, what was Abraham doing? Abraham was lying. Is that a sin? I don't even care if it's a little bit in my room, man. It's a lot, a lot, it's a lot. And Abimelech here had enough sense to not let it deter him, but rather he was going to go with God. Notice next, saw the presentation, notice the restoration from Abimelech. Look in verse 14. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. This restoration of Sarah to Abraham proves a few things. We can learn a few things from this this evening. I want you to see first off under that restoration that this is a proving of Abimelech. It's the proving uh, of Abimelech's sincerity, the proving of his sincerity. God, back in verse 7, ordered the restoration, right? He would come to him in a dream and told him to give that girl back. God called out Abimelech and said his heart was pure, and the event was now, as we know now, we can see that he was his willingness was not to take a man's wife, but just take the woman in general. He said to restore Sarah and Abraham. And that's exactly what he did, restore Sarah to Abraham. His willingness to do that shows he was willing to restore what had been put together. We find this often with people, they talk a good game when it's talking time. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll take it. Don't you worry about it. I can do that. When it's talking time, we talk a good game. But then when it's getting done time, it's, oh, uh, well, I don't, um, I really don't, you know, I don't know if I can do that. Don't talk a good game and not be willing to put shoe leather underneath it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's too, they, why, why do you think people don't want nothing to do with church? Oh, I'll go to church. I love the Lord. And then they see you over here at the honky talk the next night, falling down out in the parking lot, crawling to your car, cussing everybody, or fighting somebody. That ain't a Christ-like spirit. Not at all. Don't just, don't just be good when it's talking time. Don't just come to church and, oh, I love Jesus. If I pray, I love Jesus. <clears throat> because they see it. Yeah. Amen. I told y'all I ain't going to be real comfortable tonight. That's okay. 
Too many times we find this. That when that other situation arrives, when it gets time to getting it done, but I'm like, start singing a different tune. So that was a proving of his sincerity. His sincerity is proven by the actions that he took. Our sincerity to God, Brother Mike Brown, is proved by our actions towards God. Next, I want you to see the condemning of sin. In verse 9, Abimelech calls what Abraham did a great sin. He says, God told him in verse 3 that he was a dead man due to his great sin. We have to keep our eyes off the world. Right. Some of y'all right now lit up like a stick match out here. You're mad at me, and that's okay. Because I love you. And I'm going to keep preaching to you. Because I love you. But I want you to understand something tonight. I'm not going to back up preaching something just called hey, it hurts your feelings. That's right. Hey, 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 it's just not going to happen. And I ain't trying to be any kind of way. I'm just telling you. We've got to start living our life not like we find with Abraham here. Abraham was more sinful than Abimelech. If you put these two people, took their names out of it, and just told this story to somebody on the street, and then said, who do you think was what? People would have put Abraham as being the one that did all the giving. Mm -hmm. Not the one telling all the lies. Mm -hmm. If they didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. They said, well, that one there is more godly because he wasn't telling all the lies. Y'all know I'm telling it, right? Mm -hmm. That sincerity is proven. The condemning of the sin in verse 9, he, he calls him out, calls it, or God calls him and says it's a great sin. Remember when it calls it Abraham because he did that great sin. In our society, understand this today, adultery has become approved of. We're living in a world that it's okay to do whatever you want to do. We got our eyes on the world, and the church is getting so watered down with it now that we just don't even care anymore. Well, as long as it don't affect my life, it's going to. Yeah, that's right. It's going to. Yeah. Had somebody tell me that one time, said, well, as long as homosexuality don't get my, my, my family, I ain't worried about it. It's in their family. Yeah, that's right. It's in their family. Yeah. I'm talking, it's in their family. Mm. What you going to do? Well, you know what I can do. Because you didn't take a stand when you're supposed to. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in preventative maintenance around the house. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Amen. <clears throat> preventative maintenance around it. But we don't do it. Mm -hmm. well, it don't affect me right now. No, it does affect you right now. It's going to affect your babies. It's going to affect your grandbabies. You have got to nip it right now. My kids may go haywire in the next couple of years. But it's not because they didn't know. Right. Amen. Not because it is. It's not because daddy ain't and mommy ain't put it in them. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't live two lives, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't live two lives. Mm -hmm. I don't live my church life and then my work life. Yes. Thank God. I don't. I would preach if, if, if the two guys I work with were sitting here tonight, I would preach the exact same stuff yes, the exact right. same way. Right. And they would not be able to say, oh, he's a hypocrite. No, because this is where I stand all the time. Amen. Not because of me, Brother Matt, but because of God I serve. Yes. I got a responsibility to stand there. You have a responsibility to stand there. Mm -hmm. Pastor, why are you so passionate? Well, I'm, I'm sick and tired uh, of people having validity to the hypocrisy statement that they're making. I'm tired of it. Let, do me a favor. If you're going to live in sin, do it at home where nobody sees it. Yeah. I'm serious. You say, you validate and say it's okay to sin? No, not at all. But at least keep it out of the eyes of the public. Mm, right. My goodness, whenever you start going around town spreading that stuff, they think, well, man, that must be what he preaches. No, not at all. Why don't you come over for a little bit? Yeah. I preach completely against it. <laughs> but I ain't your daddy. I ain't living with you. I ain't telling you what to do. I told you a hundred times, if God can't fix you, I sure can't. Okay. Amen. Our society don't listen We've got to a point, Brother Matt, you realize that wife swapping has become normalized? Wife swapping. I'll take your wife for the weekend, you take my wife for the weekend. We'll get them back come Monday. That's crazy. 
-hmm. But it's become normalized in our society. It's become okay. They got they got all kind of clubs and stuff that read for it. If you happen to point out that divorce and remarriage within the same church from previous marriage, then Brother Matt, you just got no listen, I understand. We've got some people in our in our church that have been divorced. Sure. You can't put the egg back unscrambled and put it back in. Just say what you will. Right. Right? I ain't mad at you. It's not the unforgivable sin. That's true. I come from a divorced family. Mr. Yeah. Cole come from a divorced family. Divorce is whatever. But if you're saved, that ought not be in your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. See, some of y'all don't like that. Here's the problem, Brother Matt. Me preaching like that, some people say I'm insensitive. I'm insensitive. I'm unloving. I don't love people. And then you ain't listening to nothing I said. I'm just saying it ought not be normalized. Right. Mm -hmm. And in society, we have normalized it. The divorce rate inside the church is as high as it is in the world. Mm -hmm. And you think I ought not say nothing about it? Mm -hmm. Y'all, we live in the state with the second highest divorce rate. Mm -hmm. In the country. And I shouldn't say nothing about it because I'm unloving and inconsiderate. No. I'm going to yell it from the highest mountaintop. Yes, and I'm going to say I don't approve of it. Yeah. Why? Because God didn't approve right. of it. Right. I don't care what some of these hypocrites on, right. on Facebook right. and all that stuff will tell you. Because they just can't get along with this wife. Or she won't do what I want to do. <coughs> I found something better so I'm going to go over here. But I'm still okay. No. One wife. One wife. One wife. Mm. Amen. 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 Oh, there he goes. Unforgiving. No. Nope. Just preaching the book. That's why the rebuking that was done to Abraham, though we look and say it was needed, but Michael Swope, it would never fly with us. How well do you handle rebuke this evening? Now be careful. Face tells a different story. <clears throat> How well do you handle rebuke? Here's a better question. Can you be rebuked? Can you be? Now, right now it's really easy to say that. What if somebody got in your grill right after church and rebuked you for something that you did and they were right? I hope you look at them, hug your neck and say thank you. I know people that I said earlier, the friends they can't even handle disagreeing with somebody yeah. without shunning them. Mm -hmm. I prefer gray suits. I prefer black suits. Ridiculous black suit. Who wants to wear a black? What you want to do? Walk around with a black suit, white shirt, black tie? <laughs> you want to ride a bicycle around? What are you doing? You'd be, you'd, you'd, I'm serious, y'all. These people that, I got a yellow shirt on, Brother Swope. You know how many people don't like me tonight because of that? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm supposed to have a white shirt, black suit. Mm -hmm. You're going to fellowship. They won't fellowship with me. Why? Why? <clears throat> Your preference, opinions, is killing the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, Killing the church. Mm -hmm. Acting spiritual and not being. Mm -hmm. Having two or three different lifestyles. <clears throat> it's killing the church. Yep. Amen. Abraham was getting ready to the map by the way he was acting to kill an entire generation of people. Mm -hmm. He was. They wouldn't know they couldn't reproduce. That name was stopping right there. But he's God's man. He's God's servant, Miss Robin. What makes us think that we couldn't be caught in the same situation? What makes us think that we haven't hindered people from coming to Christ? Now, if you don't agree with me, I'm just not going to talk to you anymore. That's very godly. Very adult of you, too. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually down my childishness. Right. Amen. Thirdly, the rebuking of Sarah. 
Look at verse 16. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given my brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all the other. Thus she be reproved. Now there's a whole lot we could preach on that covering of the eyes. We won't go into it. It's a good little study, though. Go ahead and study that, and I think you would enjoy it. But I love how Bimelech here is what we'll cover. How he did the right thing. He went to her face. And I love how he did this. Notice the words that he used. He used the same words that she did to lie to him. You get that? Did y'all say that? Let me read it to you again. And under Sarah, he said, Behold, I have given who? Your brother. Thy brother. <laughs> hey, say, sweetheart. I know. <laughs> I love how he did that. It was a well-deserved rebuke. Sarah had been deceitful. And Abimelech snuck up beside her and said, Hey, look, I gave your brother. I know it's your husband. But I'm going to let you know, I know that he ain't your brother. He was willing to do that. She needed to be rebuked. We're silent about sin. It looks as if we are excusing it <coughs> or watering it down. Failure to rebuke sin only encourages the guilty to continue and commit more sin. Make sense? Maybe not. If your child did something wrong and you told them, that's okay. And they did it again, and you look the other way and act like you didn't see it. And then you can, do you think they're going to stop doing it? They're not going to stop doing it. Nor will anyone else until they are called on the carpet about it. Whether it be from you, whether it be from the Word of God, whether it be God Himself. You will not stop until you find out there's something wrong with it. Amen. Sin needs to be rebuked. Absolutely. We've watered it down. Failure to rebuke only encourage them to do it more. Our churches, by backing down on sin and just preaching how much God loves you, He does love you. Yes, He does. The Bible said God is love. Mm -hmm. I get it. Absolutely. But not everybody gets love to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I, I know. It's okay. Take an aspirin, go to bed, it'll be fine. Some people need to be have it gotten a grill. He said, Well, I just want to keep loving on, keep loving on. We've been loving on for 20 years, and it ain't worked. That's insanity. <coughs> Doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Brother Mike McPhail, it takes just downright dog honest yes, rebuke. Yes. To get people's attention. Please don't be part of this modern sissy society that we live in. Mm -hmm. That you can't say nothing out of the way. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Oh, I'm going to cancel, 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 cancel all you want to. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I, Brother Tom, man, you didn't grow up that way. Some, some of y'all never held a flashlight for your daddy and it shows. <laughs> you know, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, I got, I got taught that too on the flashlight working in the old car. I didn't know where he needed the light. And I'm shining over here and he needed it over here. You get told where you need it real quick. Amen. I didn't cry and go sit off in a corner somewhere. I didn't go sit up in the car and suck my thumb. <coughs> no, I stayed there. You know what? Life gets hard. I heard a quote the other day. Can I say this? I heard a quote the other day. Y'all might not like her, but I like her. It don't matter. <laughs> I can't remember her name now. But I like her. Candace Owen. That's amazing. <laughs> I love this quote. How do you feel about she, she? She's awesome. She says, 
Somebody stood up and said, how do you feel that you are making people feel bad and uh, whatever on the campus because they're uh, transgender? She said, life's hard, man. Get a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yes! That is, I'm going to make a shirt. Make me a shirt. <laughs> life's hard. Get a helmet. I'm going to hope Bible Baptist shirt. <laughs> We see the invitation. Verse number 15. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. Notice the difference from the first time he lied about the very same thing back in Genesis chapter 12. <clears throat> he was sent away with all that stuff. Now, instead of being sent away, he was given an invitation to stay. Why would he have done something like that? After Abraham had done lied, Sarah had done lied. Abimelech probably understood the importance of having somebody godly around. Why is our circle of influence so off kilter? Why do we have more worldly friends that are weighing us down and less godly friends? Abimelech say, hey, I want that guy around. God told me that's his servant. He can pray for me. I want that guy around. The importance of having this man around to pray is because he can reach heaven on his behalf. It's important for us to have folk around that can help us pray. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I used to lean on my pastor. Yes. Because he was the person I had so much confidence in that he prayed. Absolutely. I'd ask him to help me pray about something. Sometimes specific, sometimes just, hey, I need help praying about this. Yep. And he wouldn't say, well, what is it? Here, give me specifics. God answers in specifics. Yeah, he does. But I'm just needing you to pray. He would never, he would never ask. He'd just say, yeah, well, I will. I'll be praying for you. Something don't have anything works out. Something don't have to do anything else. You say to my pastor a lot, why? Because I had confidence in him. Just as Abimelech hey. no doubt had confidence in Abraham. Because of God's words to him. Ask yourself, why are you more comfortable around the world than you are in church? Why are you more comfortable around the people that cuss and listen to ungodly stuff and watch ungodly stuff? Why are you more comfortable around that stuff than you are the people who talk right, the people who act right? Because this world seems to be in favor of more and more wickedness. We can see it. It's clear. There's a clear hatred, Brother Matt, towards what we say we are. Mm -hmm. There's a clear hatred mm -hmm. to those that live a separated and sold out life. They absolutely hate them. I, 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 listen, I understand that people with weak constitutions will back down on stuff. Because they just don't want anybody to be mad at them. <clears throat> well, I understand you don't want anybody to be mad at you. But I also understand I don't want God to be disappointed in me. Amen. 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 Brother Tom, we need to live our life for one. Yes, sir. Amen. Okay. If we have, if he be for us, we are in the majority. Because who can be against us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lastly, this evening, let's look at this. <coughs> the restoration after the rebuking. 
led to Abraham praying. Verse number 17. The Bible says, So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservant, and they bare children. Abraham begins to be the man God wants him to be. But when did it come? After the rebuke. After the rebuke. Listen, none of us like to be rebuked, I get it. But when it comes, the best thing to do is just give in because God's going to keep giving you. God's going to keep ringing your bell. See, that's the important that's the importance of having a good, solid Bible study. Mm. It is. <clears throat> but just on your own, <clears throat> well, okay. That's the importance of this. Mm. How many of you have ever read the book, uh, book of Genesis, chapter number 20, verses 14 through 18, and come to the same thing that I'm preaching like? Mm. I never have. I never had up until God burned me to preach it in this series. I never had. Why is this important? Because God gives us something as a unit that's important. Mm -hmm. Something that will take us further down the road. Yes, sir. It's important to be around sound preaching. It's important to have a personal Bible study. But we cannot live just on one or the other. The Bible rebukes, and how we handle that rebuke dictates whether we are able to be used of God or not. Y'all really think if Abraham would have continued in his life, continued in his excuses, that he'd been able to pray that curse off of Abimelech? Not a chance. God will not use or hear a rebellious sinful person. That's right. Psalm 6618 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We don't understand the seriousness of that scripture. Mm -hmm. Brother Mike Brown, we just do not understand. God's serious when he said that. If you regard iniquity in your heart, he will not hear you. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. If you're upset, you're mad because the Bible hits you in the heart, hey, pray and get over it. Because you, he will not hear you if you regard iniquity in your heart. The point that is being made here is this evening, there are hurting people all around us. Sure. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. We got hurting people in our own families, right? Yes, sir. Do they need prayer? Mm -hmm. yes, do they need serious? Do they need fervent prayer? Yes. They do. How are we going to do that if we regard iniquity in our heart? How are we going to do that if we keep making excuses for our sin? How are we going to do that if we keep just pushing back and saying, oh, well, it's going to be okay. It'll get better. No, it's not going to get better. It takes fervent prayer. And we need people who will pray. How effective are we when God rebukes us and yet we won't get right? Brother Matt, as a matter of fact, when God rebukes you and you won't get right about it, you actually get worse. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. I do know that. Mm -hmm. Because I've lived it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you'll get honest with yourself, you've lived it. Mm -hmm. You actually get worse. Listen. I got to Don't let pride Calls us to not be in a position that we can be used. Make sense? Yes. Don't let pride in saying, well, he's talking to so and so, or I can't believe he preached like that to me. I can't believe. Listen, if I didn't think it really hurt you, Phil, I'd just call you name. Amen. We've got to be able to be a little bit more thick skinned. Yes, sir. Life's tough. Get in it with God. Let Him take care of you. Let Him fix your 
boo-boos, if you will, when you bump your nose and you bump your knee. That's right. Don't take it out on everybody else and don't make excuses as to why you did it. It's so funny, this week I've seen it, ever since I preached that, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. I'm just like, man, Lord, thank you for showing me what not to do. Yes. When asked about something, well, it was because of this, well, it was because of this, it is, it is, it is. Okay. We're all guilty. We've all been there. But the problem is, if you stay there. Yeah. Don't let your pride keep you from being used of God. Don't let your pride keep you from being able to pray for others. Mm -hmm. Greatest thing that we can do is pray for others. Mm -hmm. And this community needs it. Mm -hmm. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you, God.